make a special day. It was a part of the privilege of um, worshiping and praising our King. Today we will also be celebrating our family day. Of course, not just the biological family that we have, but of course the spiritual family that the Lord has made. And that would be after the worship service. So please stay, we will be having dinner mamaya, yeah. and we will be having games and an overview of the seminar, and we will be having the seminar. So uh, please stay. Again, we welcome everyone, especially some of these first to uh, We are glad to have you here today. But all the more, the Lord is pleased, the Lord is overjoyed to see you here. And, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, um, I would like to share the message that the Lord has given us. And we will be talking about the unbeliever. We will be talking about the unbeliever. So in this preaching, we will be defining the meaning of unbeliever. So that also includes the things which await the unbeliever. And apart from that, we will also be talking about the parable or a story in the Bible which could give us a better or deeper understanding of what an unbeliever is. Now, allow me to start this message with the central scripture or verse in the Bible, or we call it the heart of the Bible, which is the John 3.16. I believe most of us are familiar with this verse. Can we read in 3, 2, 1? For, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have an everlasting life. So in this particular verse, we can see the heart of the Father towards every human being. Kasi sabi niya dito, For God so loved, hindi lang for God loved the world, for God so loved to the extent or to the point of giving up His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. So ang will po ng Father is for all of us to have an everlasting life. He doesn't want anyone to be perished. <clears throat> so in this particular verse, na-highlight po yung, yung love, the unconditional great love of the Father towards all of us. And if we will go through this verse in John 3.36, it says here, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe, or an unbeliever, he who does not believe the Son shall not see love, but the wrath of God abides in him. So there is a striking contrast in this verse. He said, He who believes in the Son has an everlasting life. He who does not believe shall not see life. And apart from that, the wrath of God abides in him. So there is a danger that awaits with the unbeliever, with the un unbeliever. Because the wrath of God abides in him. When we say abides, it dwells in you. It is con constant, it is fixed. Not until you believe in the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that is the danger that we can see from this particular verse. And the Lord doesn't want us to have this wrath that would continuously abide in us. Amen? So, sabi dito, you cannot escape the wrath of God not until you believe in the Son of God. Alam niyo po yung poison? The poison is the wrath of God. And there, but there is an antidote that has been provided. That is, if you will believe or if you will put your faith in the Son of God. Amen? Okay. <laughs> okay. Perfect natin. So for an un for for the believers, there is a reward. Reward. They would have this everlasting or eternal life. Amen. And for the unbeliever, the wrath of God abides in him. So let us continuously define 
the unbeliever? In Greek word, it means apisto. Say apisto. Apisto. Not apis one, not apis three, but apisto. Amen? Okay, an unbeliever. <laughs> Christ or does not believe him as his personal savior. So someone who has not believed in Christ as the source of salvation or someone who has not allowed Jesus Christ to be the Lord of his or her life or a person who has not realized that without Jesus Christ he is a condemned sinner. Hmm? Why? Bakit kaya naging sila naging unbelievers sila? Maybe it's because it's out of their personal choice or out of ignorance. Because they have not yet been told. Right? Now, in a discipleship class, there was a question that arise from one of the students. Sabi niya, um, sis, sabi niya ganun, is the unbeliever, is the unbeliever still considered a child of God? Is the unbeliever still considered a child of God? Now let's try to answer that later. But in the sight of the Lord, what is their status ba? What is their situation? And for us to understand the meaning of this unbeliever, let us take the answers from the ultimate truth, which is the Word of God. Amen? From the Bible. So let us allow the Lord to teach us I believe that some of us has their own belief, but give the Lord a chance to lay His intents towards you. Let the Holy Spirit teach us. After all, we're not talking about religion here, but we are just talking, we are just highlighting the grace, the love of the Father towards us. We are talking about the relationship that the Lord is offering us. Amen. Okay. Basically, um, going back from the previous slide, the wrath of God abides in Him. Personally, our father or our parent gets angry at us if we go against this, their will, right? If we, have the, if we have done something wrong or we forgot to send money to the people. <laughs> Basically, uh, they get angry because something has been violated. The same is true with, the, with God the Father. What, ha what, what was the violation that happened in the past? Ba? So let us go back to the basic. Okay, Romans 5.12. It says here, when Adam's sin, sin entered the world. And Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone. For everyone sinned. Okay, in the Garden of, of, of Eden, there was a commandment that was given to Adam and Eve. Sabi ng God the Father, you are free to eat from any tree in the knowledge. <laughs> Sorry, no more. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What is the tree again? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, for, for when you eat of it, you shall surely die. That was the command, commandment that the Lord has given to Adam and Eve. Now, the serpent has tempted them. In short, Adam and Eve disobeyed the commandment. And this act of disobedience has actually resulted for every person in this world to have a sin nature. When they have disobeyed, they have brought sin and evil into the world. And whether you like it or not, whether you accept it or not, we have inherited that sin. <coughs> When we have inherited that sin, it has given us the sin nature. 
And that sin nature is causing us to commit our individual sin. You did not become a sinner just by committing your sin, but because you have inherited that sin nature through Adam. Amen. Now that sin nature has brought death or separation from the presence of God. Sabi dito, you must not eat for the, for, for, from the time that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Actually, Adam and Eve did not die because it's talking about the spiritual death. Their connection with God has been cut or separated. Ano ba, ba yung dala ng sin sa atin? Sa personal na lang kong buhay, when we are committing sin, some, something is being cut off. May it be death in finances, death in relationship, death in your joy, in your peace. Di po ba? Now, even in Psalms 51.5, sabi, sabi doon, For I was born a sinner. Yes, I was born a sinner. From the time my mother has conceived me. Bago pa nga tayo pinanganap, we are already a sinner. Because we have inherited that sin nature from Adam. Now, the sin nature that we're talking about has actually corrupted us and has given us these acquired traits. See, because of this sin nature, there is a danger and we are actually um, we actually deserve to be thrown in hell or eternal damnation. But because of this, the Lord is so good kasi kahit na po siya yung na-violate, He's still full of mercy and grace because He has provided a solution. And that is by giving His only begotten Son to all of us. Now, this same nature has given us an acquired traits. Meaning, naturally, we are greedy, we are, self we are selfish, lying, bitter, ungrateful, we're proud, we hate people, we are self-centered, we're always complaining, we're insecure, we're unbelieving, we are unforgiving. Di po ba? Kahit sa mga, sa mga kids po natin, natural lang minsan parang sa mga ugali. Because of that sin nature, meron po kasing fruit yan. Now let us continue to understand the heart of God towards the unbeliever and let us try to see His goodness, His grace towards the unbelievers through this story or parable in the Bible. Now, during His journey on earth, Jesus Christ, during His uh, last days on the earth, He was trying to, or He keeps on preaching or preaching the kingdom of God. He was going to different places and he was doing signs and, won signs and wonders. He was raising the dead. He was healing the lepers, the sick. And there was a time when Jesus was going to Jerusalem. He passed through the town of Jericho. So we will be talking about the story of Zacchaeus. Who knows about Zacchaeus? Amen. 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 <laughs> okay, Zacchaeus. Now, Jericho is a small town actually. It's a rich and flourishing town. And sabi nila, it's a place of fragrance because you're able to, to buy lots of fragrant products doon. Now, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. And there was a man there named Zacchaeus and he was the chief tax collector. He had become very rich because of this. Now he tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. Now Zacchaeus is actually a Jew. He is the chief tax collector. He's not just the tax collector, but he's the boss. He's the chief tax collector. And um, tax collectors like Zacchaeus are being despised by their countrymen, by their Jews. Because they were known for cheating the taxpayers. And they were actually working for Romans. Because during the time of Jesus Christ, Israel or Jerusalem was under the rulership of Roman Empire. So 
basically, uh, na-colonize yung Israel or yung Jews under the uh, Romans. So, Zacchaeus was actually ro uh, working for the enemy. Kaya he was uh, being despised by his countrymen. Now, Zacchaeus is a greedy, rich, or wealthy man. Despite of his position, despite of his uh, wealth, he is vertically challenged. He had this short stature. Napakaliit po niya. He was a short man. Now, at this time, Jesus was actually so famous because he keeps on uh, raising the dead. Actually, ang dami-dami na po niya nagawang signs and wonders. Now, Zacchaeus was an unbeliever. But he was so curious to see Jesus Christ. Kasi naturally nga siya ng greedy or gahaman. What could I get from that man? Bakit ba siya very famous? I need to see him. So what he did? What, what did he do? Now he ran ahead and cli climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road. For Jesus was going to pass that way. Ang galing niya, di ba? Knowing that Jesus Christ would pass by a certain sycamore fig tree, he ran ahead and climbed over that just to see Jesus Christ passing below. He is so wise that he could not he wanted to at least catch a glimpse of Jesus Christ. But you know what? Jesus Christ is more wiser. And He is an all-knowing God. You know, you can never really fathom His understanding. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And everything that He has created has a purpose. Diba? All the while, who would have thought that a certain sycamore fig tree would grow in that certain place? Why is that tree go going? <laughs> Repeat. Why is that tree going up there? Of all the places that the tree could grow. later, a little tax collector would be up that tree just to meet Jesus Christ. Amen. Meron pala ang purpose yung fig tree na yun, di ba? See, another um, interesting thing in this particular verse, Zacchaeus did not actually think of himself highly or so important enough for Jesus to notice. But for Jesus Christ, Zacchaeus was so important that he could even let that tree grow. Para sana ma makiyat ni Zacchaeus just for him to meet him. See, everything has been preordained. Everything has been prearranged for the Lord. The time, the place, the means. He actually purposely passed through Jericho just to meet Zacchaeus. Hindi lang siya yung parang na accidenting accidenting na padaan, but he has intentionally passed there just to meet uh, Zacchaeus. Because he knows that Zacchaeus needs him. The same is true with us. You know, the Lord knows that you will be here today. Amen. The Lord knows that you will be here today. Amen. And He knows exactly what you do need and what you want. Amen. Because He's an all-knowing God. So the Word is alive. The Word of God is alive. As we are discussing all these parables or these stories, try to have a self-reflection or an assessment. Ano kaya yung tinuturo ng Lord dito sa akin? In Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. See, we are all like Zacchaeus. We all have a short stature in the sense that we all fall short of God's glory and standard. See, we keep on reaching His standard, but we all fail. Kasi eto siya, dito tayo eh. Kasi yung issue with Zacchaeus, 
he was an unbeliever, a sinner. He was a rich man. He had this position. But actually, he was isolated. He was separated. He was being despised by his countrymen. Ayaw rin po ganun. You were isolated once in our lives from the presence of the Lord because of this sin nature that we have inherited through Adam. Now, there is a danger, di ba? And that's the eternal damnation. So, this is a rea realization for all of us that we actually need a Savior. Amen. Amen. Because whether you accept it or not, you cannot save yourself. We all need a Savior. And that is through believing in Jesus Christ. Now, what happened? Going back to the story, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So, habang parang si Jesus Christ, tumigil talaga siya dun sa spot na nandun si Zacchaeus. And then he told him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. See, this is the first time that they have met, pero alam talaga ni Jesus Christ yung pangalan ni Zacchaeus. Kilala niya siya. Because he's an all-knowing God. Amen. Amen. So it says here, come down immediately. What does it mean? Come down from your worries. It could be come down from your fears, from your anxieties. Come down from your inability to believe. Come down from your bondage. What are the things that keep you from coming down? What are the things that keep you from trusting your life to Him? You know, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what are, what are you trying to teach me in this story? And then He told me, Anak, come down from your fears. I didn't want to stand today, today because I don't want to I am so fearful to speak in the crowd. But you know what? If you will keep on looking at yourself, you cannot see the beauty of the world. So Jesus said, I must stay at your house today. See, the Lord wants to dwell with us. Like a father who wanted to always be with me. His son, right, Brother Burgess? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> now, brothers and sisters, today, take Jesus home with you. And you know what? A few days later, indeed, there was an exchange position that happened. So, I believe Jesus Christ, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. So I could go up the tree. Because a few days later, there was an exchange life that happened. Zacchaeus came down from the tree and Jesus Christ was crucified on the tree, on the cross of Calvary. You know, Christianity is not about a change life, but an exchange life. And ba yung trinay ng Panginoon? Sa akin. On the cross of Calvary, he has actually traded his all, his life, his fullness. He has given us the righteous nature. He has imputed us the righteous nature and he has taken the sin nature to himself. He has literally became a sin. What else? He was actually punished, actually punished in order for us to be forgiven. He was wounded in order for us to be healed. He became sin in order for us to be righteous. He died our death in order for us to receive His life. He has actually endured our poverty so that we could share in His abundance. He became a curse in order for us to enter into the blessing. 
See, He was crucified and He has redeemed us from our sins in order for us to have the everlasting life. Amen. If only you will believe in Him. That was the meaning of an exchange life. Going back to the story. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased and he said, He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner. And then they grumbled. See, Jesus Christ was there and looking up to Zacchaeus. He told him, Come down immediately. So, our Father always initiates the relationship. The, the relationship. But, there should be an acceptance from our part, or, or a response from our part. Diba ang ginawa ni Zacchaeus? He quickly climbed down and took cheese to his house in great excitement and, enjo and joy. <coughs> So Zacchaeus has actually accepted Jesus Christ and took Jesus home in great excitement and joy. So this is also a reminder for all of us that every time we come to the presence of the Lord, there should be an excitement and joy. Amen. Thursday night pa lang ready na yung natin. Amen. So every time that we come to the presence of the Lord, we come gladly. And look at the reaction of the people. The people grumbled and they were displeased. So, di ba nangyayari naman talaga yun? Whenever we come to the presence of the Lord, there is a great persecution, may criticism, maybe from our friends, from our loved ones. People always look on our past. But this should, this should not hinder us from coming to Jesus Christ. Because now, He sees us as white as snow blameless, spotless. Amen. Because God the Father sees Jesus Christ in us. Amen. Remember, hindi na tayo ito? Yung life na ng Lord? Yung nandito sa atin? So, Zacchaeus was actually condemned by many, people, by many people. But, look at him. He actually did not care about what other people might say or think about him. He just made through the crowd. He made through the difficulties. Amen. And his eyes were fixed unto Jesus. Amen. Amen. On our circumstances or, or on our challenges, on our pain and our sorrows and our feelings, we lose sight of him. And the Lord is telling us, fix your eyes on me, on my ability, not on your limitation, not on your problem, but on my faithfulness. Amen. Like Zacchaeus, no? Dumerecho lang siya kay Lord, eh. Then, meanwhile, <coughs> Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, so we, we don't know how much time the Lord has spent to minister Zacchaeus. But it says here, meanwhile, and then Zacchaeus has decided, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord. And if I have cheated people under taxes, I will give them back four times as much. And then Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house. Because this man... Two is a son of Abraham. Why did Jesus Christ said, Today salvation has come to this house? Is it because Zacchaeus has decided to give half of his wealth to the poor? Is it because he has decided to give them back four times as much? But the Lord has said salvation has come to this house because Zacchaeus has declared Lord. 
He has believed in Jesus Christ. He has proclaimed, Lord, you are my Savior. Amen. Amen. In Romans 10, 9 to 10, that is why we are always um, offering the privilege to everyone to come and openly declare that Jesus is Lord. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. So if, if we will openly declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, we shall be saved. Amen. The word our belief is not just the superficial opini uh, opinion or an idea that, okay, I believe in Jesus Christ. Because there's a, there's a deeper meaning of believing. Believing means you are trusting God as your Savior. Believing means you believe in Jesus Christ as what the Bible says He is. You believe that His death, His, His blood is enough to be the payment for your sins. Amen. You believe that His resurrection is also your guarantee that you too shall be raised to life after death. Knowing that verse, sabi niya, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord. And if I, if I have cheated people under taxes, I will give them back four times as much. See, he has actually surrendered everything. He showed his repentance not just by speaking, but by his action as well. Sabi niya, Lord, Lord means owner, my master. So he said, Lord, if you are the Lord, if you are the master, then I don't own, I don't own anything. So I am willing to pay to pay back half of my wealth. Amen. I am willing to give back four times as much. Sa mga na cheat ko. There is there is an instant transformation or conversion that has happened during the encounter of the in Jesus Christ. Because he did it. Now, my tie verse. Okay. What Zacchaeus did was was actually the fruit of his belief. Amen. It says there, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So before he was a cheater, now he has given back his wealth. Half of his wealth to the poor. With joy. Amen. There was a divine transformation that happened. And then it says there, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. What does it mean? You know Abraham is the father of faith. He was declared righteous or justified because of his faith not by his works but by his faith so in that in in galatians 3 9 it says there so all who put their faith in christ share the same blessing abraham received because of his faith so if you believe in jesus christ you too is a son of abraham amen, amen. and apart from that you are also his heirs and God's promise to Abraham also belongs to you. Amen. 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 So the Lord is not just asking for actually um, efforts or works from us. You shall be saved by your faith. That is the root of your salvation. Doing good works is just the fruit of your salvation. So, when we have placed our, our belief in Jesus Christ, we were made righteous by God. <coughs> what else? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save.
save the lost. The Son of Man pertains to Jesus Christ. He actually came for all of us to seek and to save the lost. You know, save means so so in Greek word. Save means pres to prosper, to heal, to protect, to rescue, to deliver. So if you will change that word, for the Son of Man came to seek and to heal the lost, to protect the lost, to prosper the lost, to deliver the lost, to rescue the lost. That was the mission of Jesus Christ. The lost, who are these lost people? It's us. Lost means unconscious of God, of the presence of God, separated from the presence of God. You're, you were living on your own understanding, in your own effort. Wala kang kinikilala. There's no relationship with the Lord. Once in our lives, we, we were the lost ones. That is why Jesus came to seek us and to save us. He actually came to restore everything that we have lost. Now, to answer that question, is the unbeliever considered a child of God? Yes? Yes, in the sense that we are His offspring. We are all His creation. But the Bible says, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins and in which you once walked according to the course of this world and according to the prince of the power of the air talking about satan the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience you are not called sons of god you were called sons of disobedience among among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Sad to say, the Bible says, if you don't believe in the Son of God, you were called children of wrath, children of the devil in, in other version. In the sight of the Lord, He doesn't see you as His child. You are not given the right to become His child, not until you put your faith in the Son of God. Amen. But this should also be our motivation. Na, okay, so this, un this unbeliever, paano pala pag hindi niya alam, hindi pa siya nakalinig ng Word of God? Kawawa naman sila, di ba? So, that is your role. Kasi you have been placed in different places to reach that person. Hindi ko pwedeng i-reach yung kaya i-reach ni Ate Rose. Hindi niya pwedeng i-reach yung kaya mong i-reach. Once in our lives, we were unbelievers. We were lost, we were selfish, we were greedy, we were selfish. It's because we don't know. We didn't know that the Lord has greater plans for all of us, has greater things in store for us beyond what you can imagine or what you can think. See, the Lord is so gracious that He is willing to embrace His children because He has greater plans in store for, for, in store for all of us, even for those unbelievers. In yung will niya eh. Kaya lang, hindi lang naman maximize ng unbelievers because they don't know. They didn't know that they have this great privilege. So, we have to know. And that is, that is our motivation and our goal. Right? In Mark 16, I'm closing. It says there, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every, every creature. The one who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but the one who does not believe shall be condemned. So, 
po, let us all be the bridge and advocate to preach the kingdom of God, to preach the love of the Father, His grace, His mercy towards every creation. It says they're going to all the world. We are not just here to see, to be taught, to learn, but one day you will be used by the Lord to also preach, to also share the word of God to other people. Can we just give our best love to the Lord?